I believe I have stumbled upon the greatest conspiracy the world has ever known. Why? After watching CNN and the New York Times, reading some activist websites like Common Dreams and Truth Out, I have come to one absolute conclusion that Donald Trump both simultaneously works for Russia and at Vladimir Putin's orders targeted one of their allies to trigger a war with Russia. Because apparently Putin wants America to attack Russia, I guess. Listen, man, if you've been following the news over the past several months, you know that the main propaganda like narrative against Trump has been that he works for Vladimir Putin. Why, it was just a few days ago, about a week ago, actually maybe longer, some like private plane from Russia apparently landed in Florida and everybody was screeching that Donald Trump was bringing in the oligarchs, that he was taking his orders from Putin. He got on the phone call with Vladimir Putin and they said, what is he talking about? But then something else happened. The American embassy in Baghdad was attacked. It was brutal. They tried to burn the place down. Trump came in with Marines, rejected it and retaliated against one of the top generals of Iran sparking the next wave of anti-Trump propaganda that Donald Trump is starting World War III. So here's what I have for you today. I'm going to walk you through a series of stories that slowly morph into Donald Trump works for Putin, okay? And then into Trump is trying to start World War III. And my favorite is the story that actually combines both. I don't, I don't understand how we can live in a world but I'll tell uh, where, where this kind of insanity exists, where like the media is trying to claim that he's both for and against Russia at the exact same time. I got the stories for you, apparently. But I will tell you this. Before we get into this, I'll just be fair. I think the reality is Trump is not working for Russia. I think Trump is trying to appease certain countries to deescalate tensions and actually, you know, bring about peace. I'm not saying he's doing a good job of or he's doing it right. I mean, he's certainly escalating tensions in the Middle East. But when it comes to Trump's attitude towards Russia, we can look back at 2016 and see Trump's vision of what we should be doing. So we should be bringing them in and becoming allies with them. So I think what we've seen from Trump is an attempt to de-escalate tensions between Russia. What I find particularly funny is that right now conservatives are, are particularly angry with Obama over Obama's attempts to appease Iran. So nobody's perfect. I don't know what the right path to, to world peace and diplomacy is, but I will at least say this. For one, I've been very clear that I think Trump made a dramatic escalation that probably shouldn't have been done with the strike in, in, in Baghdad. I am not the smartest person in the world, so I'm not here to tell you what you should and shouldn't believe. I just happen to lean against escalation and foreign war. And I think a lot of this stems from our involvement in the Middle East, which it shouldn't be there in the first place. So every escalation is worse than the next, or worse, I'm sorry, worse than the last. But I will also add, Many people on the left are omitting important context that what happened in Baghdad was not us, you know, the United States willy nilly being like, we're going to do it. No, it was like the, the embassy was attacked because we retaliated because they, you know, so, some uh, Iranian militias attacked uh, U.S. soldiers and, 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 and uh, you know, it was, it's, 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 it's been a long, complicated escalation. I don't want to get too much into that. The point of this video is to basically say, I think we can see now definitively that the left wing narrative of Trump and Russia, even though I know it was debunked in the Mueller report. It's just beyond absurd. So I'll tell you this. Before we get started, I do want to walk you through some of these stories. Head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you would like to support my work. It's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address. But of course, the best thing you can do is share this video. And, and, and here's why. I know most people aren't going to bother watching a video like this. But I want, I want you to look at this. That, you're that these people are claiming two paradoxical things at once. The only conclusion that when you see left-wing personalities claim Trump is working for Russia and he received orders to attack, you know, these Iranians, your, your argument is that Putin wants to us to declare war against him. He wants us to go to war with him. I mean, yeah, maybe, but it's an absurd conspiracy to think that Trump is both simultaneously working for and against Russia at the exact same time. I think this shows us the sheer absurdity of the anti-Trump pro-Putin message. And I'm going to show you these stories. Let's get started. The first story I have for you, Going back to December 19th, you know, I, and I will say too, I initially wanted to do like an actually full produce with music conspiracy video, but I thought like facetiously, but YouTube would probably strike it down. Let's be real. I wanted to be like December 19th, Quartz reports. What Trump really wants is to join the axis of evil. That was the narrative. And then I was gonna like walk you through the timeline where it eventually comes to like Vladimir Putin wanting World War III against him. No, it's just ridiculous, okay? But, but, but no, but seriously, let's read this. On January 29th, 2002, in a State of the Union address, George W. Bush, the president who fumbled and lurched us into a disastrous war in Iraq, did something that made sense. 
He introduced the term, the Axis of Evil. As we all know, this club was originally comprised of Iran, North Korea, and Iraq. Since then, nations such as Russia, China, Syria, Venezuela, and Cuba have been assigned to this camp of oppressive military dictatorships. And more recent additions may include Turkey and the Philippines. I mean, the Philippines has been getting pretty bad, but that's surprising to me. What do these so-called Axis of Evil governments have in common? A penchant for weapons of mass destruction, for one. But more importantly, they all stand in firm opposition to the United States. Despite this qualification, there's good reason to believe that more than anything, the U.S. President Donald Trump aches to be a part of the Axis of Evil cohort. The fact that recent hearings just resulted in a 230 to 197 vote in favor of impeaching Trump offers some support to this argument. But there's an abundance of other proof that Trump wants to be a part of the axis of evil. They say there's a tendency for authoritarian regimes to be run by dictators. For life, Russia's Vladimir Putin, China's Xi Jinping, Kim Jong-un, Ayatollah Khomeini, Syria's Bashar al-Assad. You get the point. Trump has joked about breaking his two-term limit And his current campaign manager, Brad Parscale, has bragged openly that the Trumps will be a dynasty that lasts for decades. Let me just stop you right there. Listen, we've had dynasties, okay? We don't like them. It's possible the Trumps will be. Uh, I think Trump Jr. may run. They're they're popular among a a, a decent amount of people in this country, but they're trolling you. Here's the point. First, I'm starting light when they say he wants to join this axis of evil because it's not particularly about Russia but about all of these countries, which includes Iran. That's the point. He wants to join the exes of evil, which the first country they list is Iran. These people are insane, okay? Trump deserves to be criticized for a lot of reasons, okay? Even Tucker Carlson criticized the escalation with Iran, the tensions, and what happened in Baghdad. We understand that. But, but what I want to get to is less about the conflict, because I, I got to be honest, I'm really, really frustrated when these news cycles start, where literally everyone says the same things like Iran, 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 Baghdad, Baghdad. So I am still talking about it, but I'm trying to focus on this. The current iteration, the current news cycle cannot coexist with the previous news cycle. The anti-Trump narrative before makes no sense in the context of, of what is currently being said by left-wing group and activist groups. Look at this story from CNN, December 30th, Trump's latest call with Putin raises more question than it answers. Heavens, there was concern that Donald Trump had a secret phone call with Vladimir Putin and no one knew what had been said. In fact, it wasn't until Vladimir Putin himself came out and said I had a good call with Trump. Did people start panicking saying, how do we only know this because of Vladimir Putin? But the story gets darker. The conspiracy runs deep because according to Inquisitor, Kremlin bank CEO, may have flown to Florida six days after Vladimir Putin phoned Donald Trump, records suggest. A private jet reportedly used by Saberbank CEO German Greff landed in Fort Lauderdale at 2.30 in the morning Saturday, according to flightaware.com. Yes, this story reported just today by Inquisitor. And I want to point out one very important detail. I will only be using verified news guard sources. I often bring up this company. I think they're pretty good, but they are biased, and I've criticized them heavily in the past. But for those, that, for those that aren't familiar, every single story and citation I use runs the news guard shield. I have stopped using some websites when they've lost their rating. It's nothing personal to the news outlets, but I'm doing this for a reason. I am going to show you a series of sources arguing that there's this weird conspiracy, sort of, Like they're insinuating this weird, nefarious plot between Trump and the Russians. And then other sources simultaneously arguing that Trump is trying to start a war with Russia. And they're all certified by NewsGuard. Now, this is not a dig at NewsGuard. I like them. I do. Okay. And and I'm, I'm glad to let you know they exist. It's a dig at the media ecosystem. This story from Inquisitor about the Kremlin bank CEO flying to Florida six days after Putin phoned Trump. Why is that relevant? Okay, people from different countries fly to different places all the time. I'll tell you what, Mar-a-Lago is a business and rich people probably want to stay there. But the insinuation they added six days after Putin phoned Trump. Okay, so uh, you you know what they're implying with this story, which is certified by NewsGuard. And this is my favorite. Back in October, Nancy Pelosi calls out Trump. All roads lead to Putin. Pelosi questions Trump's loyalty in White House clash. Why? Even after... It's been like a year, man. Okay, maybe not. Okay, I'm exaggerating. It's been, it's been almost a year. It's been like most of the year. The Mueller report came out. We know Trump is not working with Putin. It is sheer insanity. It turns out the phone call between Trump and Putin was that Putin was thanking Trump for providing intelligence to thwart a potential attack. 
The Russian president called the American president to thank him for a tip about an attack said to be aimed at St. Petersburg. Let me break down for you reality, okay? Because I don't like bearing the lead. Trump is trying to de-escalate tensions with Russia. They've been pretty hot for a while. Trump is also engaged, the United States is engaged in a Middle Eastern conflict. Trump is trying not to start a war with Russia while simultaneously retaliating against, you know, due to the escalations happening in Baghdad. They, listen, Trump doesn't work for Putin. He just doesn't want to go to war with them. I, I guess they're arguing he does both now. You know, what's funny is both narratives miss the point. You've got the narrative that Trump is going to start World War III because Russia, you know, Russia condemned what Trump did in Baghdad with the Iranian general. And simultaneously, it works for Putin, but both are not true. The reality is Trump is de-escalating tensions with Russia and simultaneously involved in a military escalation with Iran. He is not trying to start World War III. He is not going to start World War III. He is trying to de-escalate tensions with Russia, not working for them. Both narratives are wrong. Okay, so Trump provided intelligence that helped. This, this, listen, man, the Middle East, we shouldn't be there. I, 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 you know what? I did a really crazy rant the other day, some, like angry, more angry than I've been in a really long time when it comes to content like this. And, 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 and it's tough. You know, I don't like the war hawks in the Democratic Party. And I see a lot of people cheering on, you know, Trump's escalation in Baghdad. But I do think it's fair to point out we're not at war yet. Things are escalating as of right now, okay? And, and, and I don't want to get into all of the military stuff because I, I think it's, it's being really overplayed. You look back in time at Obama, okay? Obama was doing a ton of crazy stuff too, and it never made the press like this. And that's why I think we got to be careful about the narrative. But let, let, let's read out. I want to I get to the point about, I, I just, I, I'm just loving this. Trump working for Russia at the same time. January 2nd, just a day before, the Washington Post runs this story, how Russia saw Trump, a potential asset and an exploitable victim. So, so naturally, you know, I, I've got a lot of sources outlining this. Here's a tweet from Christopher C. Alberto, former federal prosecutor going after white collar crime. Someone tweeted about Herman Greff, the CEO of Russia's largest bank. Why did he arrive where the president is located at 2.30 in the morning? And he said, as America slept Herman Greff's private jet, jet close Putin ally since the 1990s, and who hosted Trump to an elaborate dinner party during the 2013 Miss Universe event, landed near Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort, where he decided to assassinate Soleimani and where Trump is located. Then we have this one. Someone said people shouldn't overlook the influence of Mar-a-Lago on Trump's decision making, to which this is just a random tweet. I know there's a big, big list of tweets like this, but I want to show you that it's not just, you know, former prosecutors or journalists, but regular people saying, no offense, but you're way off on this. Trump talked to Putin a week ago and received his directive then. It's no more complicated than that. The reason I highlight this is because I am trying to segue you between the Trump works for Putin and Trump is trying to go to war with Putin and the people in between who are actually arguing both are happening at the same time. I love it. This is a bonus from January 1st. Trump's push for lofty nuclear treaty sparks worry over current, current deal. And it's uh, like they say, President Trump and his Russian counterpart have the coming year to deal with an expiring nuclear treaty. But it's just, you know, once again, showing that there's this ongoing narrative of Trump, you know, smiling and shaking hands with Putin. It's just a bonus. I just added it for, you know, just to show you that the, the, just before what happened with Iran, the arguments were very much so like Trump's cooperation with Russia. But here's one where, it's, where it gets really, really great. Russia's, Russian state media blames impeachment for Trump's Iran strike. For Donald Trump, the annihilation of an Iranian general presents a decent opportunity for a domestic PR campaign, one Kremlin, Kremlin columnist said. This is a story that simultaneously points out Russia is condemning Trump, but then pointing the blame at Democrats for why it happened. Yes, I love the dual narrative of like Russia trying to start World War III against itself. What is <laughs> Look, man. I mean, it's possible, you know, there's a lot of crazy conspiracies in this world. It's, it's, it's possible, but so, so absurd. Indy 100 writes, we're now, we're now getting into the World War III narrative where it's about Trump going to war with the axis of evil, not wanting to be a part of it. You see, I did this as sort of a gradient, like starting with Trump loves them to Trump simultaneously loves and hates them. And now to Trump hates them. They ask, Indy 100 says, this is the independent. Over the next few days, we'll likely hear well, they spelled here wrong. Get a copy editor. A lot of different opinions on what's going to happen next. Foreign issues can be unpredictable, particularly when someone like Trump is in the White House. The former UK ambassador to Lebanon said that the crucial question is what happens next. 
though he did suggest that Soleimani was a much more powerful figure than bin Laden or Baghdadi, where at the moment of their own deaths, their power was in decline. The question is, is World War III really on the horizon? Now, I, I'm highlighting this as a, as a neutral piece. This is actually, you know, it's fine to ask the question. They're saying, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. There's a potential for World War III. While I can be critical of the independence previous reporting, I think it's fair to point out, as, as of right now, you know, they're not definitively saying yes or no. They're not accusing Trump of working for Putin right now. But I do want to point out uh, another, another important bit of information. This was uh, the 27th of December. China, Russia, and Iran begin joint naval drills. The four-day exercise in the Indian Ocean and Gulf of Oman comes at a time of heightened tensions between the U.S. and Iran. Well, this is Al Jazeera, okay? And, and I've been critical of AJ+, and Al Jazeera's not perfect. But once we start getting into, like, legitimate news and talking about what's really happening, I think the narrative becomes clear. Yes, Russia and Iran are allies. Russia has condemned the action that Trump has taken. Donald Trump is trying to reduce tensions between Russia, probably because of the Middle East. It's, it's so insane to me how you can't see what's really happening, okay? I understand this is just my speculation, my opinion, but let's, let's put it this way. Trump, for a while, has tried to appease Putin. Why? Because we have active military bases surrounding Iran, and Iran has been engaging in actions against U.S. interests, and Trump probably knows there will be an escalation between the U.S. and Iran, there will be an escalation of tensions, and that he needs to make sure things have simmered down between Russia to a certain degree, that if tensions between Iran light up and things will start lighting up with Russia, it doesn't breach that point of war. In the 2016 debate, Trump said, we don't want to go to war with Russia. I believe that's the case. I believe Trump is trying to work with Russia to the best of his abilities, because we're escalating tensions in Iran. I do not like any of it, okay? Let's be clear. I'm not praising any of it. I'm making the point that it appears Trump is not trying to join the axis of evil. He's trying to simmer down tensions because they're likely to escalate in the Middle East. Let's put it, let's, let's put it simply. The axis of evil included, you know, North Korea, Russia, and Iran. The tensions between Iran were probable. They've been going on for a long time. They were, Trump was about to fly planes, to, to a strike in Iran, and he canceled it. And one of the reasons may be tensions with these other countries are too hot. So Trump tries talking with Putin. Calm down. We'll work with you here. We'll do these things because he knows what's coming in the Middle East. And it's an, an attempt to over to, to oh, 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 I'm sorry. It's an attempt to avoid World War Three. I am not praising his actions. I am just speculating based on everything we have. So to put it simply, no, he's not working for Putin. And, and no, he's not starting World War III. The U.S. is not going to have a ground invasion of Iran. It's going to be constant Middle Eastern tensions like it always will be. So now we have, quite, quite honestly, my favorite story. I was going to save it for the last, I was, but I'm, I can't do it because I know a lot of people are probably tuning out after the, you know, so far into these videos. CNN's obsession with Trump's ice cream intake resumes with lampooned dessert report. I kid you not. CNN apparently ran a story about Donald Trump eating ice cream as the, the uh, uh, escalation was occurring in Baghdad, to put it simply. <laughs> CNN was panned for once writing about how Donald Trump got two scoops of ice cream when everyone else got one. And CNN jumps the shark again by talking about Trump's ice cream. Now, I'm going to end on a more serious note. I threw this in here because I thought it was funny and hopefully you laughed at it. But the next, the next stories we have are the more uh, activisty stories. So first, this is McClatchy. It's legit journalism. They say is the U.S. headed for World War III. Here's what experts say. Once again, I'm showing this as kind of a counterbalance because I'm going to show you some activist narratives coming up in a second. But McClatchy's is, is okay. They, they've got some false reporting on Russiagate. They apparently never corrected. That's what I read in a previous segment. And they're asking the question. Here's what, here's what people on Twitter are saying. You know, tw or, I'm sorry. Here's what experts are saying. Twitter fears the worst. But let me bring you to common dreams. World War III trends as hawks rejoice at Trump decision to assassinate an Iranian military leader. Hawks are celebrating Soleimani's assassination, yada, yada. So basically, this one is still kind of a bit fair, but they're, they're, they're pushing this insinuation of World War III. We are now totally outside of the realm of Trump and Russia. We are now in the territory of Trump and the war hawks are cheering and dancing for World War III. They're not talking about Trump and Putin anymore. And lastly, we have truth out. Trump celebrates new decade by trying to start World War III. And this ends my gradient from, from crazy to crazy. We started with Trump trying to join the axis of evil, and we end with Trump trying to destroy the axis of evil. You know what, man? I read the news every single day, and I'll tell you this. It's very clear the narratives are insane. Trump is not trying to start World War III. Trump is not working for Vladimir Putin. Y'all are nuts. 
It's just insanity. But the, the, here's the thing, okay? I'll tell you this. They're both left-wing narratives. It's left-wing activists arguing that Trump is trying to start World War III. It's, it's left-wing experts and pundits arguing that Trump is working for Putin. What are y'all doing? Conservatives don't believe any of this, and both can't be true. <laughs> I love it. This is 2020. We have a media arguing, and, and my favorite, I gotta say, is, is the ones in the middle that are simultaneously arguing both. That Putin, Putin C, the, the CEO of this bank, flies to, to, to uh, six days after, okay, Trump gets a phone call from Putin. Here's the conspiracy. Uh, apparently telling him that an oligarch is going to meet him in Florida. The oligarch flies to Florida and then instructs Trump to target an ally of theirs to trigger a war with them. You would have to believe one of the most insane and absurd conspiracy theories ever. I'll tell you this. When you look at some of the crazy conspiracy theories of the past about like false flags the United States engages in, some of them are true. I'll admit that, you know, like Gulf of Tonkin and stuff. But they're arguing that the government is trying to benefit itself. They say the U.S. government engages in these conspiracies to gain power and to trigger wars. This conspiracy would have to be that Donald Trump is taking orders from Putin because Putin wants a war against himself. <laughs> Don't ask me why. It's like a double conspiracy. It's like Vladimir Putin isn't trying to convince his people. He's trying to instruct the president of a foreign country, one of the most powerful, the most powerful nation on the planet, he, who, who he has control over to declare war on him so he can win, maybe? I, maybe it'll be bad for the U.S. I mean, I mean, look, fine. I, I guess if Trump worked for Putin, then Putin could tell Trump where and how to engage in the conflict or something. I don't know, man. I think everyone's insane. And, and, and we have this story from Truth that where they're saying Trump is trying to start World War III. That's their opinion. And it starts with the opinion of Trump is trying to join Russia. So I, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Are oligarchs flying to Florida to give Trump secret instructions to take out their own allies? That's psychotic. Okay. The reality is the world is chaotic, man. Okay. Sometimes rich people fly to golf resorts. That's it. Donald Trump is the president. He has phone calls and meetings with countries like Russia. Nobody screeches when Trump has phone calls and meetings with other countries. It's just Ukraine and Russia all day. Okay, because Trump is certainly talking to other people. Nobody screeched when Obama was meeting with Putin. Nobody screeched when Obama was working with Iran. Nobody screeched when, and when I say nobody, I mean the, the media and the press and these narratives, because certainly activists have been. A lot of left-wing activists were calling out Obama for his drone stuff too. I can respect that. And I think it's still fair to call him out and to call out Trump for his drone stuff as well. The issue is, you know what, man? I was very, very critical of Obama, okay? I, I, and it's partly because I voted for him. I grew up in Chicago. Chicago was Democrat, period. There was no Republican influence in, in my life growing up. So, so the, 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 the lies, the cheating, and the stealing were coming from Democrats pretending to care about what we cared about. I voted for Obama thinking that there was hope and change. It wasn't. He bolstered our troops in the Middle East. He engaged in some of the most egregious and, and, and authorita authoritarian foreign policy. There, were the tar there was the targeting of American citizens, nonprofits, hospitals, etc. And I screamed about it. I was angry. I was betrayed, outraged. This was what Bush was doing. How dare you, Obama? So when Trump comes around and he's preaching he's going he's gonna to do the opposite, I say, well, you know, he's saying that on the debate stage. Hillary Clinton was pro-war. I'm not going to support that. I was betrayed once. At least she was being honest, but I'm not going to support that. Trump said he'd do the opposite. Trump has up the ante when it comes to drones. There's been more. Uh, depending on which reports you read, I know it's contested. Uh, but Trump is certainly escalating things in the Middle East. I understand why, okay? It wasn't like Trump just snapped his fingers and decided to start, you know, an, an escalation. It was, it was conflict back and forth, and it's been going back and forth for a long time. And Trump didn't bring us into the Middle East. So, so look, I understand. But it's about time we left, period, you know? I look at it now and I say, you know, what, what, I, what I told Crowder when I'm on the Crow Crowder show is that the, the office controls you, okay? There, there's intelligence, there's a machine at play, and, tr and the president isn't as powerful as you think they are. Trump has done right by the economy, I'll give him that, but he's not doing right foreign policy-wise. I don't care what you think about escalation. The point is, we need to go. I understand the escalation. I understand why Trump did what he did. I get it. I understand the, the reasoning and justification from people on the right. And there's even some people on the left in media who are agreeing with Trump on this one as well. Mostly they are the establishment war hawk types. If we want to stop the escalation, it's time to go. I'll be fair, okay? The attack that sparked this was on uh, an American embassy, right? And I know before that there was the, 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 the militia. 
Anyone, anywhere can attack an American embassy. Even if we weren't putting our military in Iraq and Afghanistan, we would still have embassies there. They're still vulnerable. So it's, 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 it's important to point that out. These were particularly brutal attacks on American soil, and Trump retaliated as he did. I wish he didn't. I wish he didn't have to. I don't know what the right answers are, but I don't believe escalation will solve the problem. I understand the idea of, you know, not wanting to be weak, but it's about time, regardless of your thoughts, we get out of the Middle East. You get the point. I'll leave it there. I'm not going to turn this into a military rant video because I do those enough. But this is basically about the dual propaganda narrative of the left, which literally makes no sense. So I hope it's been, I hope it's been fun for you. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash TimCastNews. And I will see you all then.